morning. I'm Will Kaiser, partner at KNL Gates. KNL Gates is sponsoring these energy news interviews, and I have the pleasure of talking with Fabrice Hudry from Vice President Energy Energy Solutions at Samsung SDI. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining me. Good afternoon. Thank you or for morning, having I guess. me. Pleasure. <laughs> So uh, let's start off in talking about sort of uh, Samsung and, and w what you were doing. So your f company was formed, uh, formed in 1970. That's correct. Well before the big boom of sort of the energy storage industry. So I'd like to kind of just get a little bit of background about sort of how you positioned yourself and your company uh, to take advantage of, of the vanguard as, of sto storage as it kind of came out. Sure. Uh, so indeed, the, the company in 1970 was looking at the, 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 the highest growth market, and at the time it was display type business. And uh, it started the first decade, established itself, the second one um, really uh, on a strong growth path, and then the third one reached globalization. Uh, strong of this globalization establishment, the company then in uh, the early 2000s realized uh, and dedicated a lot of its investment to the energy business, energy and materials business. So they shifted their business uh, towards that. As far as batteries are concerned, the focus was uh, and has always been lithium ion. We were uh, a late entrant compared to our competition. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it's only in 2010 that uh, we came out with our lithium ion batteries for stationary energy storage. But um, Samsung uh, Group and Samsung SDI in particular are really um, uh, focusing on speed of execution of strategy and uh, that allowed the company to, to quickly in a few years establish itself as the number one player in stationary energy storage. By 2013 uh, we had established this number one position in terms of market share and uh, globally we've kept it since then. So today you look at the market uh, ESS market globally, we, we have 30% uh, market share. In uh, America, it's uh, even more so uh, the reality with 40% market share on a you know 1.5 gigawatt hour market this year. Uh, we are going to deploy between uh, 500 to 700 megawatt hour of batteries to the ground in America. Great. So let's kind of take it a little bit sort of to present day time. And, and I know recently you've announced a project, uh, I think it was February of this year, a, a uh, storage solar hybrid on Kauai Island. Can you tell me a little bit about your experiences there and, and kind of how that project worked? Yes, um, my pleasure. This is a very exciting project. As, as you can uh, probably tell from uh, our past uh, experience, we've really been uh, bullish about supporting our partners on uh, large historical projects. So last year in 20, uh, three years ago in 2016, you know, the Aliso Canyon project was mm -hmm. um, front and central in everybody's mind and, and Samsung SDI provided 70% of the batteries for that. That was uh, a, a, a huge uh, transformation that we had to do for ourselves and for our partners. And then same thing um, this year, together with AESD and several other partners, uh, KIUC, etc. We've uh, come together to create uh, the largest uh, ESS plus PV hybrid uh, solution. The next one is only half the size. It's also in Kauai, by the way. Um, but uh, we felt this was such a unique project providing so much value um, without you know, talking about incentive or uh, things of that nature, but more by the mere uh, rational business case that it, it brought to the inhabitants uh, over there that uh, we really put uh, all our efforts into making this project happen. So this project now is under construction, is going uh, really well towards the COD date before the end of the date. So it's gonna go online before the end of the year. And um, it will provide in the end 11% of the island, Kauai Island uh, generating resources, uh, which brings for Kauai uh, a total of 60% with this project, 60% of renewable energy is now their uh, generation uh, profile, which is amazing and uh, really a source of inspiration for the rest of the country, I suppose. That's great. That's impressive. Now, I've noticed that you've done a lot of projects in Hawaii as well, in, yeah. in particular. Can you tell me a little bit about what kind of makes that market such a great market for storage and, and for your company? We, we've done, in my opinion, only a, a few compared okay. to what I think is coming up. Okay. Um, indeed, the Hawaiian market is uh, an extraordinary market that needs so much uh, support from renewable resources. Um, 
first of all, they have great ambitions. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to reach 100% of renewable energy by 2045, I believe, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, and towards this objective, some islands, uh, mm -hmm. such as Kauai, have already gone a long way. I was just six, talking about 60% sure. uh, a, a minute ago. So this is a very, very strong driver for projects to make sense out there. Um, needless to say that the cost of electricity, especially from uh, conventional sources of energy over there, are very high. So when we are able to come with uh, a, a PV plus ESS hybrid solution at uh, the cost and price point we were able to bring it together with our partners, it just makes very, very strong business sense to, 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 to implement those. I think we will see uh, with HECO uh, making very bold moves towards procuring a lot more of these kind of resources. We will see throughout the islands, uh, Maui, Oahu, Big Island, etc. Mm -hmm. We will see a lot more of those deployments in the in the next few years. Great. Now, are there other markets in the U.S. that you're targeting as well? Well, so certainly the we we now in America we have more than one gigawatt hour of stationary energy mm -hmm. storage deployed, and our markets that we've really focused on have been you know California, obviously in itself represents one of the um, most dynamic and fastest growing state or country, <laughs> if you wish, uh, but also uh, states such as Arizona, Texas, uh, all the PGM related states, mm -hmm. uh, Florida, um, uh, and you see a multitude of announcements right now being made by the northeastern states about uh, dedication uh, uh, towards more renewable energy, towards more energy storage. So all of those states are, are certainly a, a focus area for us. Uh, without forgetting, you know, moving into Canada, the states of Ontario okay. and, and such, uh, we've deployed numerous projects there and uh, continue to do so. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more. I know you've, you've got projects all across the world. Are there yes. particular countries, you mentioned Canada, you've got the United States, where else are you, are you targeting? So certainly, while uh, my responsibility is for the Americas mm -hmm. uh, region, uh, I am uh, always very much involved in looking at how Samsung SDI worldwide uh, is establishing itself. Samsung SDI certainly is and want to remain a global player. There is something a bit unique happening right now in the marketplace, especially for the last year, and which is going to last for maybe another year or two, mm -hmm. is what is happening in the domestic Korean market. Uh, there, are, there have been uh, substantial incentives, subsidies provided by the government in Korea to um, uh, create a much bigger market than what it used to be. So it, the Korean market used to be uh, far smaller than the American market, but this year, for instance, just in itself, it represents between 5 and 7 gigawatt hour, whereas the American market alone is um, 1.5 gigawatt hour this year. So you can see uh, the kind of um, difference there is. So there is right now for Samsung SDI obviously a very strong focus in Korea, mm -hmm. but on the long term, uh, medium term, we see the American market coming back to being the number one market uh, globally for us uh, uh, by 2020, uh, after those incentives in Korea uh, slow down uh, quite a bit. Then the next regions are uh, Europe, uh, Australia, certainly we have uh, deployed a lot of our uh, batteries in Australia with various partners and uh, we, are, we are thinking that uh, many more will go on the ground out there this year and, and next year. Great. Well, let's talk about kind of bring it back to the, to the United, the America, United States sure. and you had, you had mentioned that you expect that to kind of become the number one kind of growth market for storage. Are there certain, are, do you expect certain changes, certain policy changes, market changes that could really help drive the storage market here and, and expand the growth? Sure. Um, in, um, actually, America was, uh, for several years, the first region in the world mm -hmm. for stationary energy storage, and now the domestic Korean market has taken off, but uh, it will certainly come back in all our prediction as uh, a, a very distant number one market. Um, spurred by not so much more incentive and subsidies like we hear in Korea or in right. China and elsewhere, but actually by sound, rational uh, business case that make energy storage a more cost beneficial, reliable uh, source of energy. Uh, policies, uh, definitely, legislation definitely will support the growth of energy storage, 
but I don't think in our energy storage industry we are looking for um, exception of, of privilege. I think as long as those the existing policies, the energy policies, are evolving to allow energy storage to compete with an, on an equal footing with all the other sources of energy, which is not the case today, mm -hmm. I think energy storage will naturally find its place and grow tremendously. So uh, I, I know a lot of the RTOs, ISOs are doing a lot of work towards that and we applaud it and uh, really welcome uh, the speed at which this transformation is taking place um, and uh, it will naturally happen. And with the recent FERC order, I think the expectation is that the markets are going to start opening up. That's exactly what I was referring to, whether it's from a wholesale energy perspective or retail all the way down to the municipalities. Um, as long as the rules and uh, policies that are, that are in place are fully open to energy storage, energy storage will prevail. So let's kind of shift a little bit. I think we've been focusing a lot more on the wholesale and the, and the utility scale storage, but thinking about sort of the commercial and industrial and the residential, are, are you focusing on that area? We are perhaps less known for it because of the big massive mm -hmm. projects that we have deployed, but uh, we were uh, and have been for many years a pioneer with partners in the CNI behind the meter market. So you take companies such as NG and mm -hmm. others, which used to be only startups that have been acquired. We've really been by the side of those companies even when nobody believed in them and we were their, 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 their partner providing batteries for them to put in enclosures, etc. Um, so the CNI market only represents a third of the market today in America, um, but it, it has a very strong potential for growth. So what we are doing, we are partnering with uh, a, a variety of companies that will provide the turnkey solution for behind the market solutions, mm -hmm. whether it's with uh, one of our joint venture we have in China, SunGrow, or whether it's with companies like DynaPower or others, um, we are providing our batteries to this market uh, right now. And uh, we invest in innovation that will be specifically tailored for the needs of those markets behind the meter. We, we, we strongly believe in it. Great. Even though the utility mar scale market will remain far larger than this market according to our forecast. Great. So let's let's wrap this up with one one final question, and sure. I'll let you talk about where do you see the future for Samsung SDI and, and energy storage. Well, it's certainly. So from um, from a pure market size uh, perspective, uh, Samsung Group and Samsung SDI are doubling down on all the investments that we have done already in creating for many years our, our Giga factories have been mm -hmm. running for many years already and they will continue to grow and expand because we need to find that uh, capacity that's needed to address this uh, hugely increasing market. So that's going to be our focus. Um, uh, in terms of uh, technology, uh, I think the importance is to evolve from the chemistry that we are using today towards a chemistry that uh, um, uh, is less dependent on unstable sourcing, such as, for instance, uh, cobalt sourcing is a real big issue we are facing, right? everybody is facing right now. Um, so we are investing also a lot in uh, mastering this supply chain, uh, balancing that supply chain and transforming our product innovation um, uh, towards uh, um, materials that are uh, abundant uh, uh, and more easily sourceable. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Sure, it's my pleasure. It's been very informative. Thank you for having me.